are stabilizing after a successful Italian debt sale took the edge off worries about instability in Europe, at least for the time being. Yudi Chang, Chief Investment Officer at Ace Investment Strategies, joins us right now. Good to see you again, Yudi. Let's talk about banks, because you have not only what's going on in Europe, and obviously Italy ratchets everything up a little bit here, but you have the debt ceiling uh, negotiations looming and a three-week deadline. You like banks here? Yeah, believe it or not, actually I do, but I'm talking about U.S. banks only, I mm -hmm. think for mainly four reasons, okay? Number one, they've already been trashed. Number two is the fact that they actually have lesser exposure to European debt crisis. And number three, uh, if you look at it, a lot of those so-called mortgage liability problems, they pretty much have resolved. And number four, interestingly enough, look at the credit card fee issues. They actually have a very strong lobbying group behind them. That's why I think they will survive the so-called financial reform. So based on all that reason, and the fact that I think we should be buying low and selling high, that's why I actually like the banks at this level. You still have to pick your stocks, though. I mean, do you like the, 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 the former investment banks, the Goldman Sachs, the Morgan Stanleys? you like the big banks, the cities, or do you like the more regional banks, the U.S. Bank, for example? Fantastic questions. I think I right now more like the so-called commercial banks over the investment banks. Thus, I like Bank America. I like a Citigroup over J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs at this level. All right. Uh, you know, keeping with this theme, though, you also like energy stocks uh, right now. Why do you like the energies? And again, sort of like the banking question, do you like the big integrated names? Do you like drillers? Do you like oil services? Yeah, over there, I actually like the big name, uh, uh, the big name energy, the, uh, the big integrated oil companies, I think for several reasons as well. Number one, they are still having relatively low P.E. at this price level. Number two, energy market. Yes, China is slowing down, but nevertheless, GDP still projected to be about nine and a half percent. And this so-called new class of people that's been created, the middle income class in Brazil, India, in, uh, in, in China, I think they will still need energy energy regardless of the economy. Mm -hmm. Thus, I like the oil companies and also I like their dividend plays too on the big oil majors. Do you get in now though, just from a, simple, from a timing standpoint here, UD, do you just stay on the sidelines a little bit until some of this uncertainty, particularly the debt ceiling stuff is cleared up? Or do you get in now anyways and maybe take advantage of a market jump once they do clear that up? Yeah, you know what? Let me ask you slightly differently. I tell you, because there are two school of thoughts here, right? Number one, one thing that most people would agree is that right now, not much had been factored into the market on this debt ceiling issue, up or down for that matter. So people are saying, boy, just in case these people lose their heads and really somehow do not come up with a uh, uh, agreement by August 2nd, my God, this market is going to fall apart. But by the same token, if they do come up with an agreement, which they're expected to, we might get a relief rally. So it depends. Depending on what kind of risk reward are you looking at. You're saying, you know what, I'm willing to risk some, but not willing to miss the rally, mm -hmm. then I think you should be in now. But if you're saying, well, wait a minute, I worry about that eventual catastrophe, then you need to stay out of it. UD, great seeing you. Thanks, sir. Great. Thank you, Chris. Right, UD Chang, Lori. Okay, up next, Charlie Gasparino will be along. He's got